Majora's Mask may be the game I find the most fun to theorize about, mainly because it has so many mysterious and unusual elements for a Zelda game. I have plans to talk more about the game eventually, but today I want to take a step back and look at a primary mechanism of Majora's Mask, time travel. Many Zelda games use time travel to some extent, yet each time, something changes about how it works. Sometimes Link goes to the future, sometimes to the past, and very often both. Majora's Mask is a bit different though, since Link relives the exact same three days over and over. So how exactly does this work in-game? Let's try to figure it out. Now before we get to the time travel itself, there's a few things you need to know about the whole time travel scenario. As you likely know, Majora's Mask has a constantly ticking clock, and at the end of three in-game days, the moon gives Termina a big hug. The Ocarina of Time is the instrument by which Link manipulates time given to him by Zelda. When used with the Song of Time, it allows him to start over the three-day cycle. Link and his fairy companion Tattle retain their memories of the previous three days, but nearly everyone and everything else is reverted back to how they were at the beginning of the last cycle. So with all that in mind, the first thing here we really need to determine is what kind of time travel is going on. As far as I can tell, there's a couple possibilities, the first of which I like to call your standard time jump. This is one of the more common kinds of time travel, where a person is removed from their current point in time and placed at a different point in time. In the game, this would be Link removing himself from the moment he plays the Song of Time and returning himself to where he was at the beginning of the three-day cycle. However, there are a few issues with this method in particular. For one, Link would essentially be teleporting himself into the exact spot his body was before, which probably defies some law of physics somewhere. This also conflicts with how Link loses some items when traveling back in time, which we'll get to later. And finally, if it's like the time travel we see in Age of Calamity, then Link would be creating countless timelines, leaving behind Termina after Termina to be destroyed by the moon, and I don't think I could live with that. So, unless there's a lot going on behind the scenes that explains why Link doesn't explode, and why the timeline isn't a whole lot worse, I don't think this one is quite it. The second type of time travel is similar to the first, but instead of bringing all of Link back in time, only his mind would return to the past. Based on the fact that Link and Tattle keep their memories, but not much else, they certainly at least keep some part of their mind with them, regardless of the method. In theory, this would also solve the issue of a bunch of Links exploding inside of each other each cycle. However, this one could still run into the timeline split issue, and it also makes it a lot harder to explain how Link keeps any items going back in time. It's hard enough to explain on its own, but with Link not even physically moving back in time, keeping physical items begins to complicate things even more. So I don't think that one quite works either. The third option, which I find to make the most sense, is that Link simply turns back time until the beginning of the three-day cycle. This lines up with the cutscene following the Song of Time, where clocks are seen actually turning backwards. The difference between this method and the time jump method is that Link wouldn't be instantly moving to another point in time, rather just making time flow backwards until the beginning of his journey, so to speak. In turn, this would prevent the countless timeline splits, and also means Link wouldn't defy any laws of physics, except with all the time travel, but that's an issue no matter what. Unfortunately, this still doesn't explain why Link keeps or loses so many items, but that's okay, because that's what we're looking at next. Regardless of what method of time travel is at play, Link seems to have some trouble holding on to all of his items when restarting each cycle. While he does keep some things, like masks, key items, or maps, he loses quite a few of his belongings as well. So let's quickly lay out every item and see what might be letting Link hold on to them. Link is able to keep many of his items when going back in time. He keeps the Ocarina of Time, every mask he's obtained, the Hero's Bow, the Lens of Truth, the Hookshot, the Magic Arrows, all glass bottles, the Pictograph Box, and the Great Fairy's Sword. He also keeps the Bomber's Notebook, the Bomb Bag, the Quiver, and their upgrades, Wallet Upgrades, and the Mirror Shield when it replaces the Hero's Shield. Perhaps most importantly, he keeps the Gilded Sword when it's forged from the Razor Sword. In contrast, he loses all of his rupees, deku sticks, deku nuts, bombs, powder kegs, arrows, the razor sword, 
title deeds, and any quest items like the Pendant of Memories. He also loses any bomb chew he has gotten, magic beans, any pictograph he has taken, and anything in his bottles at the time. So, oddly enough, the things that Link can keep with him outnumber the things he leaves behind. Yet, he still loses a bunch of his belongings. The question is, what is it that determines what he keeps and what he loses? At the end of the day, it's obviously so you can play the game, but it's clear that some line is drawn between what he keeps and what he doesn't. Let's start with a group of items that Link can keep every one of. Masks. Every mask Link obtains can be taken back with him in time, whether it be made to hunt a missing person or a mask with colossal powers. While many of these masks have obvious magical properties, some seem to be downright ordinary, making it odd that they can travel back in time. However, there's two interesting quotes I'd like to highlight that might explain what makes every mask Link has special. One is made by the Locomo and Jean in Spirit Tracks. As I am sure you know, happiness and gratitude create energy. Well, I am deeply grateful to both of you for all your help. I cannot help you directly, but I can at least give you this Force Gem. And the other is made by the Happy Mask salesman himself. But my, you sure have managed to make quite a number of people happy. The masks you have are filled with happiness. This is truly a good happiness. Without going too in-depth on the topic of Force, Force Gems and Gratitude Crystals are physical manifestations of happiness that are filled with lots of energy and can do amazing things, like restoring the spirit tracks or turning a demon into a human. This energy is even used to power up swords like the Master Sword or the Four Sword. In a similar fashion to Spirit Tracks or Skyward Sword, Link helps the people of Termina with their troubles, and in turn, they give him masks. These masks are said to be filled with happiness, so it's possible that they're filled with force as well. In that case, is it possible that a great amount of force in these masks allows them to travel back in time with Link? Again though, this is just a theory. If it is indeed possible that magic, or a great amount of energy, allows items to transcend time, it would also explain several of the other things that Link can take back in time. For instance, the Bomber's Notebook may not seem like a magical time-traveling item at first, but the Bomber's Secret Society of Justice is all about bringing happiness to the people of Clocktown, so it's possible that their notebooks may be rather similar to Link's masks. The Lens of Truth is obviously magical in nature, so it certainly fits the bill as a magical item in that way. Even the Hero's Bow might have some kind of magic in it, since it's apparently designed to work with the magic arrows found in Termina. My favorite example of an item Link can keep would be the Gilded Sword, forged from gold dust and the Razor Sword into a blade that Link can take back in time. It seems that some hidden power within the gold dust can be used to help this sword transcend time, and the gold dust itself reminds me of the Sand of Hours from Phantom Hourglass. However, that's a topic for another day. Whether magic or force truly allows Link to keep his items though remains a mystery. Why, it could be that Link just falls through some white, clocky, swirly portal, loses some stuff, and voila, time travel. So, how do you think Link is traveling back in time? Or what do you think lets him keep his items? Let me know in the comments. Also, we happened to hit a thousand subscribers recently, which is, as you might expect, a pretty big milestone. All I can say right now is thank you to everyone who's helped me get this far, but I'm hoping to do something for the thousand subscriber mark soon, and you'll just have to wait and see what that is. Anyway, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time you're in the Legend Zone.